I'm Sandhil Vail Bolgan, lecturer, senior grade from Europa Polytechnic College. And today I'll explain how to use a CR. In front of you, we have a 30 MHz scientific make oscilloscope. This red button is a power on switch. These knobs are intensity and focus switch. CRO is meant for tracing signals. You can trace two signals at a time. You can measure voltage, frequency and time period. As you can measure or trace two signals at a time, you have two channels here. One is channel 1 and another one is channel 2. These switches are associated with channel 1 and these switches are associated with channel 2. Let me switch on the CRO. You can view a straight line in the screen of this CRO. You can adjust the intensity or focus as per your requirement by adjusting this intensity and focus knob. Suppose if I'm, if I'm using channel 1, I have to select channel 1. So this push button is for channel 1 and 2 selection. If the push button is in the released position, I have selected channel 1. See, I can adjust the Y position of channel 1 by adjusting this Y position knob. If I want to select channel 2, I will push this push button. Now channel 2 is selected. I can adjust the Y position 2 or the Y axis of channel 2 by adjusting this Y position 2. I can view two signals to, at the same time by selecting two channels. This is done by pressing this dual channel. I can view two signals at the same time. You have a test signal in the CRO. One is of 0.2 volt square wave, another one is 2 volt square wave. Let us uh, test this signal. I am connecting the BNC connector of this probe to channel 1 knob. And the red crocodile clip is connected to 2 volt and channel 1 is selected. See, you can view a square wave in the screen. You can adjust the scale of Y axis by adjusting this volts per division selector switch of channel 1. See, you can select the I can increase the scale or decrease the scale by selecting a suitable holes per division. Similarly, the y-axis, the scale of y-axis can also be varied by selecting a suitable scale in the time per division. By suitably selecting a, the time per division, you can uh, reduce or increase the scale. Next we will see how to measure the voltage and time period of this signal. Hi everybody, I hope you have understood how to use a CRO to trace a signal. You have understood the various knobs and their adjustment. And now we will see how to measure a square wave using the CRO how to measure the voltage and time period of a square wave in this CRO. Look at this, the screen of this CRO. The screen looks like a graph sheet. You have checked boxes here. This vertical line represents Y axis. The horizontal line represents X axis. You have several divisions in the X and Y axis. Suppose if I am keeping volts per division as 1 volt, that is 1 volt per division, it means that in the y axis 
each box represents one volt this represents one volt and this represents one volt and in each box you have five divisions a five small division a single box represents one volt per division so a small division under the single box will be one by five that is 0.2 volt so the small division represents 0 0.2 0 0.4 0 0.6, 0 0.8 and then 1. So this vertical box represents 1 volt. You can also change this volts per division and suitably the value of this box will vary. And if you look at the time per division, I have kept the time per division as 1 millisecond. So you have a millisecond range here and a microsecond range here. But I have selected 1 millisecond here. It means that the horizontal line, so this one box, the horizontal line represents 1 millisecond. So this is 1, 2 millisecond, 3 millisecond, it goes on. So each box represents 1 millisecond. And you have 5 small divisions under this box. So 1 divided by 5 gives you. 0.2 millisecond so each small division represents 0.2 millisecond so this is 0 0.2 0 0.4 0 0.6 0 0.8 and then 1 now let me connect the test signal and i'll measure the voltage and time period So I have selected 1 volt per division and the signal is connected to channel 1. I can adjust the Y position up and down. I will place it on the X axis. Similarly, I can also adjust the X position. I am just placing the starting of this square wave on the Y axis. Now let me measure it. So as you know, first I'll measure the voltage. Each vertical box represents 1 volt per division. So you have two boxes. So you, it means that the voltage of the signal is 2 volt. This is 1 volt and 2 volt. So the voltage of the signal is 2 volt. Now let me measure the time period. So time period represents the positive as well as this negative because this is one this forms one cycle. I placed one millisecond per division. I am adjusting the y position and x position in such a way that it rests on the origin on the axis. So I have to measure from here to here so this is the starting point of the signal and it ends here let me adjust the intensity to view it clearly so the time per division is one millisecond and the whole total time period it covers one box and another box so 2 millisecond and after that we have three small divisions you have three small division as one box represents 1 millisecond three small three small divisions that is one small division represents 1 by 5 that is 0 0.2 millisecond so you have three small divisions so it comes to be 0 0.6 millisecond so totally from the starting to the end it comes to 2.6 millisecond so the time period of the square wave is 2.6 millisecond and the voltage of the square wave is 2 volt
now we have understood how to measure a square signal how to trace it how to measure the voltage and time period and thereby to calculate the frequency of the signal next we'll see how to measure a sinusoidal signal how to find out its peak to peak value voltage and time period let's start the session now we are viewing a sinusoidal signal in the screen of the CRO to start with we'll measure the peak to peak value of the sinusoidal signal first note down the volts per division the volts per division is placed at 10 volt that is 10 volts per division you can keep it at any volts per division uh, as per your requirement but uh, it should be visible in the screen so I am keeping it at 10 volts per division I am placing the signal on the x axis and then I am measuring the number of boxes covered by this peak to peak signal so it covers this signal covers 3 boxes right from here 1, 2 and 3 as each box is represented by 10 volts per division 3 into 10 will gives you 30 volt so peak to peak value of the sinusoidal signal is 30 volt next we will measure the time period of this sinusoidal signal so as this is a sinusoidal signal we have to place the signal on the axis symmetrically that is see here um, the sinusoidal signal this is your axis you should have a po equal positive as well as negative peak so let me adjust this as the, this is 30 volt 15 volt should be the positive peak and 15 volt should be the negative peak I am adjusting it here So that the positive peak covers one box and three division negative peak also covers one box and three division that is it is in between the axis now we'll measure the time period of this sinusoidal signal i have placed the time per division as five millisecond so this positive half covers two boxes and negative half covers another two boxes so totally you have four boxes so 4 into 5 millisecond gives you 20 millisecond so the time period of this sinusoidal signal is 20 millisecond if you want to calculate the frequency frequency is equal to 1 by time period so 1 by 20 millisecond will give you 50 hertz so 50 hertz is the frequency of this signal this is how we have to measure the time period and voltage of a sinusoidal signal i hope you have understood the usage of cro how to trace a signal measure the voltage time period and thereby to calculate the frequency of a signal now you can use the CRO confidently. Thanks for watching.